Welcome to our Blue Christmas service. For tonight's worship service, our call to worship says these words. As we gather this evening, all around us, lights are lit and carols play. The season heaps joy upon us, yet we who come here, we carry more than joy. We carry loss, we carry worry, we carry grief and pain. We come weary, seeking rest from expectations. We also seek a holy presence to be with us. We come to this place by the resilient grace of God and a love that never lets go. Let us pray. Loving God, one who hears all, sees all, knows all. Be with us now in this worship service. Guide our hearts and our minds to receive a word from you. God, you know what it is that each and every one of us stands in need of. You know what worries us. You know what troubles us. You know what is weighing on us. And God, we're asking that you would show up, ease our burdens, comfort our minds, warm our hearts. We know that you promise to always be with us, never to leave us, never to forsake us. And it is on that promise, God, we are resting. We rest in you. We rest in the comfort of knowing that you can do all things except fail. So even when things look frantic, even when things bring us dismay, God, we can put our hope and trust in you, that you will carry us through when we are not able to carry on. God, you lift us up and bring us through. Yes, you are the one who is able, especially during this season of the year, God, that may bring so much joy and sorrow, happiness and despair. All of these things are complete in you. And so we put our hope and trust in you this day. Be with us in this service. Give us a word from on high. Encourage us so that we may continue to go on. And God, we will be ever so mindful to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. Because you are God. You reign supreme. And in this day in this season we celebrate your sovereignty you conquered all in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray amen I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. While I'm on my pilgrim's journey, Lord, I want Jesus to walk me 
in my trials please walk with me in my trials please walk with me When I'm on my tedious journey, Lord, I want Jesus to When I'm troubled, please walk with me. When I'm troubled, please walk with me. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Thank you, God. For a few minutes, I want to talk just a little bit coming from Psalm 147, verse 3, where it says these words. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So for a subject today, the Lord just says, I know you're not okay and it's okay. I'm not okay and it's okay. This Blue Christmas hits differently than a year ago for me in particular. Last year, I was lamenting that we had to put my mom in the nursing facility in November, right before Thanksgiving. And the realization was that my father was going to be alone for the first time in almost 60 years. I was not okay. We couldn't visit her uh, like we wanted to due to COVID restrictions. I was not okay. The lamentation morphed uh, into deeper grief as my mother passed this past February, 2021. On February the 10th, she took her last breath due to complications with Parkinson's and dementia. And her funeral was on February 17th, and it was a graveside service because of COVID. I was not okay. 
See, I'm a leadership professor and I'm a leader and so I was on autopilot. I needed to do what needed to be done to make sure that my 90 year old father did not have to deal with the business of death. I was not okay. And in my state of not being okay, the spirit of the Lord jacked me up <laughs> and said to me, I know you're not okay. And it's okay because I'm right here. I'm right here with you. You are not alone. Not only that, God says that to me. God says that to all of us in this season of grief that we experience while others are experiencing joy. God says, I, I know grief too. Why? Because I sacrificed my only begotten son on that hill in Calvary just to save you. I know grief. I was not okay, and it's okay, because I knew what was coming next. Grief is real, and we all have the right to grieve. Now, I keep saying uh, uh, it's, it's okay instead of and it's okay instead of, but it's okay. See, I'm not okay and it's okay instead of, I'm not okay, but it's okay. See, at first in my spirit, that seemed to be an awkward kind of construction because as an old high school English teacher who used to drive home the usage of these conjunctions, it just didn't make sense. You know, the, the conjunction that you heard, conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. That conjunction. But the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to a new vision. The Spirit of God says, and it's okay, instead of, but it's okay. See, the word but stops a thought in its tracks, and it introduces something else. On the other hand, the word and connects an additional idea to be considered jointly. Now what does that mean right now in our moments of grief, preacher? What does that mean? See, this small, yet significant shift in language opens the atmosphere. It opens the atmosphere to acceptance and possibilities, not one of rejection and defeat. God does not want us defeated in grief. This and, this A and D allows for a space of inspiration. It's the opening of the space for the spirit to come on in and to move in a different way. The A-N-D invites the spirit to come in and comfort and guide us. See, beloved, it is okay for us, it is okay for us to have this lament that we feel in this holiday season, this holiday cheer, this holiday celebration, because lament is simply a prayer in pain. It's a prayer in pain that leads to trust. It's not only how we grieve, it's also how we praise God. It's how we praise God through our sorrows. See, lament is a pathway. It's a pathway to praise when life gets hard, when life gets sad, when life is just in a place where all you can do is cry and moan. Because if I can't say a word, then I just what? I just wave my hands. It's the A N D moments of life in our lament where we cry and we praise. Our lament and time of not being okay creates the space for God to heal our broken hearts and to bind up all of our wounds. 
See, when God binds our wounds, God wraps God's arms around us and comforts us. Even if we feel unworthy, God still deems us worthy of God's love and comfort. God does heal our broken hearts. Be it if we lost someone we love to death, to divorce, whether it's a loss of a job, loss of an opportunity, a friendship, any loss that this season of joy reminds us of. See, there's no timetable for grief. Yet, <laughs> yet, another conjunction. See, yet usually connects something negative with something positive something painful with something comforting. See, yet often brings together in one thought, in one sentence, both the dark clouds and the silver lining. Yet can be powerful, a word of hope, a word of encouragement. Yet, God, our ultimate conductor on this train that we call life says that at every junction, hallelujah, we can cling to the promise that God heals broken hearts. There has never been a time that God has not come through. That's the A-N-D, the and that we can always count on. See, there are 7,487 promises of God to mankind in the Bible. And there are seven that we can pull up right away in this time of grief, in this blue season. God says to us in the midst of this season, in the midst of it all, God says, I will always be with you. And I will always protect you. And I will always be your strength. And I will always answer you. And I will always provide for you. And I will always give you peace. And I will always love you. These are the promises that we can count on with 100% surety in our God. God will heal our broken hearts. God will heal our broken spirits. And as that song says, don't be discouraged because joy comes in the morning. And here's the peace that we can always remember, morning always comes. Amen? Amen. As we gather this night to remember those who have touched our lives, Glad memories and happy stories and love that we hold very dear. We can name those who have been life itself for us. We gather in the name of Jesus, vulnerable as an infant, joyful and happy as youth wise and caring as adults. We gather in the presence of God who brings life and light to all. All life is precious in God's sight. All life is precious in God's sight. No one is ever alone or forgotten. In remembrance, Tonight we will light four candles in honor of our loved ones. We light one for grief, one for courage, one for memories, 
and one for love. Shadows move. 
This candle represents love. The love we have given, the love we have received, the love that has gone unacknowledged and unfelt, and the love that has shared, been shared in times of joy and sorrow. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Christ candle, remembering that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the center of our lives. Jesus hears our cries. Jesus knows our hearts. And in the midst of it all, our thoughts and emotions, Jesus offers us hope and Jesus offers us healing. Amen.
relationships. Yes, He will heal you, completely heal, totally heal. All around, all over you. Yes, He will. He will heal your spirit. He will heal your soul. Yes, He will. soul. I'm not okay. And it's okay. Because God heals the brokenhearted and binds our wounds. So now unto that God, we give glory, we give honor, we give our love, and we are grateful for yet another day. Thank you, God. In the matchless and holy name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Go in peace.